Hey there guys, it's Tina and I am back! I am doing a makeup tutorial video for you guys. I mentioned in my last Get Ready With Me, which was an extremely long chatty one, that I wanted to do more makeup tutorials. I'm still gonna make them get ready with me styles because I don't wanna just be like, put this here, put that there. I still wanna talk with you guys, but I want to be focused more on the makeup and the application so I can give you guys tips and tricks as I work through applying the makeup. So today, I don't usually wear eyeshadow, but I decided to make an exception for you guys this morning. So I am actually using a palette. So what I'm gonna try to do is play with more palettes individually on my channel. This is the Latte palette from Dominique Cosmetics. It has neutral shades, a couple of pops of color, but nothing too crazy. And I also incorporated a couple of other fun new products that I have in my collection that I wanted to showcase with you guys. So if you wanna see how I got this look, then stay tuned and I will talk to you soon. All right guys, so as usual, I'm starting off with a clean, uh, freshly washed face. And I'm actually gonna go in with this moisturizer that I got as a sample from Sephora it's the Dr. Jart Prime and Moisturizer it's the V7 Prime and Moisturizer so it has a multivitamin complex and I wanted to try this out just to see you know because I love a vitamin C kind of product either a serum or a moisturizer and this has multivitamins I think the V7 stands for the seven vitamins that it includes and it's a lightweight, like, white peach moisturizer. So I'm just gonna apply that to my skin and allow that to fully absorb. Let's hope this, um, this doesn't make me oily because that would be, that wouldn't be good. I don't, yeah, I don't like being oily. And I'm gonna go in with a little bit of my Banana Bright Eye Cream from, who is this, Ole Henriksen? Ole Henriksen and apply that directly under my eyes. My under eyes have been a little bit dry, so we're gonna see if we can remedy that. I don't know if any of you guys have this experience. Right here on my skin is lighter than the rest of my face, and it's drier, like literally right here. I don't get it, like under my eyes I would probably understand more, but it's literally on the side of my face. It's just weird. I'm gonna fill in my brows, so I'm gonna go in with my Sephora Beauty Amplifier Primer around my brows. And this look is gonna be my version of like a lightweight summer look, but still with makeup. It's gonna be easy, simple, well, <laughs> I should not say that because usually when I get on camera, I start doing the most, even when I intended on doing the least. I end up doing even when I even when I intend to do a simple look, it ends up being the most. It's just something about the camera that gets you going crazy. So brush my primer through my brows and now I'm gonna go and fill them in. We can probably speed through this, right? Because you've seen me fill my brows in quite a few times. I'm using my Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil in the shade 4.5, which I absolutely love. It's become my favorite brow pencil of all time. And I try a ton of brow pencils and they're ones that I like, but this one has just taken over as my favorite. For my eyeshadow primer, I'm using the Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion. It's a little bit more moisturizing than some other primers that I have been using. And sometimes I just need my lids to be nice and happy. And it also helps with the eyeshadows, but this is going to help with the creasing of any eyeshadows on my lids. Now let's go in with some concealer under my brows. This is from ColourPop. It's the shade Deep Golden. I think the number is 40 now, but who knows? It used to be 60. This is the original number in. Can somebody for once and for all tell me what the correct number is? Because I just keep forgetting. I'm using my Anastasia Beverly Hills number 18 concealer brush just to outline the bottom of my brows to keep that sharp shape. I do this anytime I apply eyeshadow. I just feel like my brows should be on point like they should be sharp and defined 
if I'm gonna bother to put eyeshadow on. And then I'll just blend that out with my Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush. Now, I usually skip eyeshadow when I'm getting ready for the day. I don't know, maybe I've just gotten to the point where I'd rather just get out the door and get more sleep than play with makeup in the morning, so... I don't know, but today I felt like doing something cute. So I'm going to use my Eyes to Mesmerize Cream Eyeshadow from Charlotte Tilbury. This is in the shade Antoinette. I would consider this kind of a champagne taupe. It definitely is more of a champagne, but it has a little bit of that silvery undertone that makes it more of a taupe. And I'm just going to use my same Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush to buff that over the lids. And literally, I can be done here because it's like a wash of color on the lids that gives it a little bit of interest but nothing too crazy and I can walk out the door. But I'm going to go in with the palette of the day which is the Dominique Cosmetics Latte Palette. As you can see, it has some fun colors but some neutral colors as well. So we're going to go ahead and play with some of these neutral colors. I'm going to grab the caramel shade here. This is a Sonia G Detail Pro Brush and the caramel shade is just a matte skin tone color and I'm just gonna buff that in the crease just to lay down a little bit of shadowing. Nothing too intense which is why I like this palette. The colors are nice and simple and they blend really well and apply nicely on the skin but they also aren't overwhelming, so you're not gonna just go in and just be like, oh my god, it's too much pigment and you don't know how to buff it out. Then I'm gonna go in with the hazelnut shade. This one is a warm tone brown and I'm just gonna buff that in the outer crease using circular motions. I don't necessarily love palettes with warm tones in them. I've gotten like, I am so over the warm tone trend. Like I wish we would stop having oranges in palettes and just get neutral browns. Like, neutrals are okay, neutrals are in, we don't, I mean, not like neutrals, like neutral shades, but actual neutral undertones. We don't need to always do warm, so I'm not the biggest fan of warm undertones, so I'm going to actually pull like deeper shades from another palette. But we're going to start out with that, and the shade I really want to get into is this one here, which is called Espresso. And I'm going to apply that on the lid using a Sonia Kashuk eye shader brush. This is a gorgeous shimmery shade. I'm actually just applying it on the inner half of the lid. And that applies really beautifully. I was thinking of dampening my brush, but I don't even need to dampen my brush with this shade. That actually applies really well. That is beautiful. I'm going to go in with the more nude type of shimmer shade. This is Creme Brulee. And then go over that espresso shade. It's going to add a little bit more warmth to that shade. It's coming off very like olivey gold and I want a little bit more warmth so I should have probably gone in with the creme brulee shade but layering them up is also an option so it's not a big deal and again these shades are layering up pretty well I don't have to dampen them and they're giving me like beautiful shine that's awesome so I'm just doing like back and forth motions pressing motions and buffing motions and then I'm going to go back in with the detail brush from Sonia G and blend around the crease area. That's going to soften the edges so it doesn't look as intense. And even go in the inner crease and buff it out. The inner crease for me tends to look a little bit stark. As you can see, it looks a little bit harsh, but just blend it out but we can go back in with that caramel shade which is that nude beige shade and buff on the inner lid and inner crease just to make that a little less shimmery and now i'm going to add a little bit of color with the cold brew shade this is a matte teal and i'm just gonna pop that on the outer half of the lid i'm just lightly applying this color to the outer lid and buffing it in i don't need this to be like a really pigmented shade right now. I'm just using it as a simple pop of color. It's not meant to be intense at all. Then I'm going in with the dark brown shade, which is Mocha, and I'll use my Sonia Kashuk blending brush, 
and just go in and buff that shade into the outer V just to deepen that up, add in some depth so it looks a little bit more dimensional. And you just buff and make sure that the edges are seamless. For the highlight under the brow, I'm gonna use Vanilla Cream. This is just a matte yellow toned vanilla shade and I'm just gonna buff that under the brow using my MAC 252 shader brush. And because that outer V isn't dark enough, I'm gonna go in with a long comb eyeshadow. This is the shade Stone. It's a matte dark brown with a little bit of a warm undertone. These are some of my favorite, if not my favorite matte neutral eyeshadows. Yeah, I think I can go as far as to say these are my favorite matte neutral shades. They just apply so well. They blend so easily, they have great pigmentation, and they're just fantastic to add to any look. If you need more depth and you're not getting it from the shadows that you're already using, like, I'll just go in and grab one of these. I have quite a few of the shades, and they just work so well. Like, look at that. Like, I didn't need to apply a lot to get color payoff. And it just blends out so effortlessly. I mean, this brush is really nice too, but these eyeshadows, I can't get over it. Very expensive, but worth it in my eyes. So I think I want to do something a little bit more interesting on the eyes, so I'll be right back. So I have these Glitter Baby Metallic Shift eyeshadows from Smith & Cult. They're actually like a cream eyeshadow. They have a doe foot applicator. This one is bronze and it's really gorgeous. I'm gonna grab a Scott Barnes number 61 fan brush and I'm gonna grab the product on the tip of the brush and just go very lightly over where we have the teal. The teal wasn't really showing up that much. It wasn't really impressive. Now, usually people apply these colors on the center of the lid. I want this on like the outer half of the lid. I want that color to show up there. This is so pretty. You could use the doe foot applicator as well, but I want to have a little bit more control and a little bit more blendability with the shade. I don't want it to be too intense. So I'm just gonna lightly blend it using this brush. And it blends out pretty easily as well. It's just so gorgeous. Oh my god. I hope you can see. I'm going to probably zoom in so you can kind of see the color that this has. It's so pretty. And it's applying really well and blending pretty nicely. So I really love this color. Oh my god. Can you see how beautiful that is? It's just shimmery and gorgeous. And again, it's not too like pigmented or anything so it doesn't look... Crepey. I'm just gonna go over it again with that brush and they move and blend without picking up the color under them Which is another thing that I like about these eyeshadows I'm gonna go back in with the stone eyeshadow from Lancome and just buff over the outer V with this Just to blend that color in so you can blend the edges of the glitter shade but these are around the same price as the glitter and glow so it's not outlandish and I think they are so so gorgeous so let's do some work on the face I'm going to use a little bit of my Tarte Timeless Smooth and Primer I'm gonna put some on my nose since I've gotten this nose ring it's just been a, a task and a half with um, foundation because it wants to it covers up the nose ring and then my nose has been stripping a little bit like there are dry flakes on my nose and it's I just don't like putting foundation on it I have some glitter on my face so let's get rid of some of that I'm just lightly going over my face with um, a face wipe nothing too crazy because I think the foundation that I'm gonna use is gonna cover that up anyway I'm using my Too Faced Peach Perfect foundation this is the comfort matte foundation and the shade I'm using is mocha and I'm just, I'm not using a lot. I'm just gonna go over my skin and buff and blend this out using my Marc Jacobs The Face 3 brush. I've seen that Marc Jacobs, some of their products are on sale. So I'm wondering if they're discontinuing products. And some of their brushes are also on sale. I don't think The Face 3 brush is on sale, but these are very expensive. 
but I've had these brushes for years so I think they were definitely worth the investment for me and with this foundation it's very lightweight it's a matte foundation and I'm again not using much I'm just making sure that I buff it all over my skin so it blends in and that's the thing about the summertime. I don't use a lot of foundation. It's, people have asked me for like a no foundation routine. If I'm not wearing foundation, I just don't wear foundation. If I'm going for a lightweight look, I just use less product. And it's not that difficult to use just a little product. So when people say they only use concealer, I kind of use my foundation as concealer in that sense. Like I use very little and I just apply it strategically around my face to even out my complexion and to cover up any discoloration. I don't really have a lot of problems on my skin like hyperpigmentation or anything. So I can just quickly buff over my skin and make sure I get all at my trouble spots just to even out my skin tone with very little product. So that's all I'll do. Just make sure everything is nice and seamless and blended. On camera, it shows that I have darkness under my eyes and since I'm wearing eyeshadow, I'm gonna go in with some concealer. This is just my Tarte Shape Tape in the shade Dark. Typically, I don't go in with concealer under my eyes. I don't really care that much about perfecting my skin, like day to day. But with eyeshadow, once you wear eyeshadow, it's kind of a little bit more pronounced because your eyes are becoming the focus of your makeup. So people are going to be drawn to your eyes. So your under eye circles are going to be a little bit more visible, a little bit more pronounced. So I just go over with a little concealer and the shape tape is pretty nice. And I find like the less product that is now in the tube, the better it is. So it's almost like the longer you use it, the better it becomes. So I'm just going to blend that out really quickly. And then to set the foundation, I'm going to go in with my all-nighter waterproof setting powder from Urban Decay. This has been a lifesaver in the summer months. It's like a really great blotting powder. It doesn't apply too much color, but just be careful because it's lighter. Like I'm a, I have a tan now, so my skin is a little bit darker. And it's a light powder. And it can want to come off a little bit white. So if you're darker than me, or even my complexion, just be careful. I can use it with like darker foundations because it does help to lighten them up a bit. But like typically I don't um, want to use it with a lighter foundation because it's going to make it look even lighter. So it works now because I have on a foundation that's a little bit deeper. I'm going to go in with my sponge and make sure that I get under the eyes since I have concealer now and I have lines under my eyes so I want to make sure that those lines don't crease. This is a weird step for me and it's just because I have a nose ring but I get my saline solution that I was given to clean my Pearson and I go around my Pearson to remove like makeup or anything. That's just a thing I've been doing with since I have a nose piercing, so. For my under eyes, I want to use a pop of color. So I'm going to use Chameleon Air from Sydney Grace. It's one of their multi-chromes that they recently released. And it has, oh my god, it's shimmery green, like a teal and a purple. And I'm using a Sonia Kashuk small shader brush. I got way too much under my eyes right there, but we'll clean that up. And I'm dampening my brush a little bit with my Smashbox Primer Water, and then just running that on my lower lash line. That is beautiful how that's picking up. Gorgeous. I'm actually gonna go in with a little bit of my face powder and buff the edges of that <laughs> because it really looks a little crazy going that far down. So if ever you have this situation, just go in with like a face powder or a skin tone color and go around the eyeshadow. You can do that on the lids as well. If it goes too high up, get like an eraser shade and go around the edge so you take away some of that intensity because that was a lot. I'm actually gonna go back into the Chameleon Air color but with a MAC 242 and get that right up against the lash line. Because I still want the color to show. I just got too low with that other brush. So that was my fault with using the wrong brush. There we go. So that's still intense. But not as crazy as it looked before. 
Mascara is my Too Faced Better Than Sex. And on the lower lash line, as usual, is my MAC Extended Play Giga Black Lash Mascara, which will never, ever be replaced. And I'm just going to go in with a little bit of black liner. This is my Tarte Smolder Eyes Liner. I've noticed that my Urban Decay Perversion, I don't know what it is, it's my favorite black liner. But it's irritated my eyes and I feel like, oh my god, what is going on? But at the same time, it's like such a beautiful, rich black. I, I'm still going to use it. Oh my god. I'm just going to sharpen it. Maybe if I sharpen it a lot and get rid of whatever is irritating my eyes off of it, maybe that will make my life much better. All right, you guys, wish me luck today as my eyes start to water over this liner but it's so richly black it stays put it's such a good liner I love it so I don't know like why is it irritating my eyes or my eyes just like irritated by makeup period because I don't wear a lot of eyeshadow anymore maybe that's it maybe my eyes are like um we don't even do this so what are you doing stop it all right already my eyes are a little irritated <laughs> as i speak oh my god okay i'm gonna do a little bronzer so i'm using the cover effects duo this one is suntan bronze which is the darker one and i'm using ha, a morphe brush this is an e2 brush <laughs> i've had this brush for a while but it's a nice large brush so it's good for applying bronzer when you're trying to get all over the face I'm going to apply a little bit to like the temples and just all over. I'm not like really focusing this color. And this shade like I just love it. It just blends really well with my skin. I'm going to also go in with one of the blushes. This one is Warm Honey and I'm just going to grab that on a Smashbox brush. Since we're doing all the things, I'm just going to buff that on my cheeks. This is the Precisely Blush brush. I don't know how Smashbox has been doing with their brushes. I think they have discontinued them because they haven't done well. But they're actually pretty decent brushes. I just don't think they got much of a high play. No one was really checking for brushes. I'm going to use the highlight part too. It's almost like you have to come out with products that blow people away so you can be the leader of a trend. Or you have to come out at the right time when everybody everybody is like itching for a product so like brushes when they came out with their new brushes like no one cared no one was really talking about them and they came out with a whole line and there were decent brushes some of they were expensive because people don't want to spend money on brushes let's figure out a lip no one wants to spend money on brushes so they came out they were beautiful but they were pricey so people were like Mm, 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 mm. no okay so I ended up putting some more glitter on the lids because I wanted it to spark some more so yeah and now I'm just gonna contour the bridge of my nose because my nose pretty much just disappeared and has no definition so I am applying the sun kissed bronze bronzer duo from cover effects this brush is from the Allori collection and I just, I love the color of these and I love how soft these bristles are for synthetics. The way the bristles are stacked, so how the brush is shaped, makes it really great for blending. So, okay, lips. What shall we do for the lips? I think we need to do something nude because I don't feel like doing much at all. So I'm actually gonna do a lip from Uma Beauty. This is the shade Tracy. This is one of their badass icon matte lipsticks. This is so beautiful. It's like a caramelly brown nude shade. Now I have a video that I want to do for Uma Beauty because I have quite a few of their products. I'm going over this with a little bit of gloss from Pat McGrath Labs. This is Flesh Fantasy. And I'm just going to put that in the center of the lips. Really love these glosses as well. This lipstick is really lightweight, really comfortable as a matte, but I just love a gloss. So it's a beautiful combination. But um, I do have a video I want to do for Oma Beauty. I've done the lip swatches and I think I might do the lip swatch video separate from like the overall video. Tell me what you want me to do because they have quite a few products. They have quite a few lip products and they sent me the whole line 
at least I think the majority, yeah, I think I got the whole lip line. I have the three eyeshadow palettes. I have the foundation in. So tell me how I should do that video because I feel like if I do a complete overall video, it's going to be extremely long. And I feel like the lip swatches might be better in a separate video. So maybe that's what I'll do. I'll do the lip swatches in a separate video, do the eyeshadows in a separate video, and then do like the complexion video, um, products in a different video. I think that's what I'll do. So yeah, here's the completed look. And I am completely loving this. It's a really pretty look, didn't take me that long. It's simple, but it has a pop of color. And I love, I love this lip. I'm gonna finish up actually with a little bit of setting. I don't know that this is a setting spray. It's just a misting spray. So this is from Tatcha. It is the Satin Skin Mist. I got this because of Kelsey Brianna J here on YouTube. She said this was one of her favorite things and I was like, I don't even love setting mist, but I'm gonna get it because I love Kelsey and I do trust her. And she has oily skin and she said her skin held up in, um, excuse me uh-uh did y'all see the spray okay it stopped working okay there we go so she mentioned that this helped her during the hot days that she spent in Texas and I was like I'm gonna try that so so far it's very lightweight like I don't feel it on my skin it doesn't leave like this overly dewy look it doesn't leave a powdery finish it just feels nice and refreshing so we're gonna put that on and this is it. I really, really like this. What do you guys think? I love the Smith and Cult eyeshadows. The thing about these that I should mention, if you manipulate them and work with them a lot, they're gonna get very smoky. It's like the glitter transforms into this smoky look because there's a black base. So if you don't want them to like blend out, just leave them, just do very little with them. So that's why I went ahead and reapplied it. What do you guys think? I really love how the eyes turned out. I think this is really, really pretty. The lips I love as well. This might be a little clashy because it's warm with cool and... Listen, does it matter? Does it look cute? That's all I'm worried about. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this makeup tutorial type of get ready with me video. It wasn't really chatty. It was just focused on the makeup. And the products and I really love how it turned out hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well I will go ahead and leave links to my Instagram Twitter and snapchat where you should be following me along we have fun over there we have fun right 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 you can interact with me there and I will also probably show you this dress this is a repeat dress I got this from New York and company last year it's such a pretty comfortable dress it's easy. I love dresses in the summertime because they're one piece and they're done. I don't have to like put things together and accessorize and do anything crazy. It's just a simple dress. It's kind of like a t-shirt dress with a band. Again, I will show you um, a little clip of this. And I have silver jewelry on, which I don't usually do silver. I am a gold person, but I just love it with this outfit. And yeah, I think this look is really fun. I will go ahead and leave all the products mentioned down below in the description box along with links on where you can pick those up. Those are affiliate links that I generate through Sephora and or Ulta. That means I will get a small sales commission off your purchase if you buy through my links. If you're not comfortable with that, just shop the way you normally shop, no must, no fuss. But if you do shop through my links, thank you so much because it does help me to put right back into the channel. And until my next video, which will be very soon, that was a little stuttery. Until my next video, that will be very soon, I'll talk to you. Bye, guys.